Hey, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video, which isn't a news update video, more of a, I don't know, me posing a question to you guys, looking at the facts of this current Chelsea FC squad and seeing or speculating what they can do this season. Now, we know there's a transfer window that's about to end. We know Chelsea had a transfer ban lifted so that they could potentially make signings, but not just make signings. By getting the ban lifted, it also reduced a fine and also take a look at it as perhaps wiping away a criminal record. In future incidents, they could always look back at this time and say, look, we were acquitted of this situation. We did nothing wrong. So just because they got the transfer ban lifted, it doesn't necessarily mean because they want to make signings. It means they want this sort of wrongdoing washed away and they want the fine lifted as well. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Chelsea's current squad. Frank Lampard is or has been calling out for signings, but can Chelsea and Frank maintain their top four position with the current squad? I'm gonna talk about that in today's video. But before I do get into the content, I wanna remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. Please do hit the subscribe button, bell notifications icon. Why not like this video to help a brother out? And also, remember, Follow me on Instagram if you want to link up for the live streams I've been doing in the evening. It's at Football Yannick on Instagram. I've stopped doing live streams on YouTube for now, so come check me out on Instagram. Right then, Frank Lampard has said on multiple occasions in post-match interviews that he does want reinforcements in the goal-scoring areas, but I think perhaps he also understands that he doesn't want Chelsea to go and do a panic buy. Chelsea have been linked with a whole host of forwards most recently, uh, Dries Mertens. There are of course conflicting reports in regards to Mertens. Some people say yes, it's a deal that he'd be interested in doing. De Marzio um, said maybe. Alfredo Padula says absolutely not. I mean, I get the fact how he's, I think he's four goals off becoming Napoli's all-time top goal scorer, beating Milik. He's already overtaken Maradona. So I get why he perhaps would want to stay. But I also get why perhaps he'd fancy a move to Chelsea to do it for 18 months. Go check out my last video on Dries Mertens if you've not yet watched that. So deadline day is upon us in a matter of hours or tomorrow or whatever it's soon. Now I'm not writing Chelsea off, they often do deadline day business and they could still bring in one, hell maybe even two players in before the deadline and the window shuts dramatically slam shut because that's what the transfer window does it slams shut so i'm not going to write that off but i want to speculate that chelsea don't do any business because there is a, <laughs> a very it is really likely that chelsea don't do any business lampard will of course be left frustrated and maybe so will olivier giroud who might have to stay at the club we'll have to see what happens with that but can chelsea get top four can they secure champions league football with this current squad because let's be honest they're kind of in fourth place despite poor performances and they're kind of relying on really poor results for people like Manchester United. Chelsea is somehow six points clear, but other teams are doing business. Tottenham have done business, Arsenal have done business, and it does look like Manchester United have secured Bruno Fernandes, which is massive for them. He's an excellent player. So if anything, Chelsea should be looking at their rivals doing business and thinking, Maybe that's a little bit more extra push for us to do something. Still, let's think about it. Thinking, thinking, thinking. <laughs> the truth is, Chelsea can make top four with their current squad. Think about it, the right hand flank now has been lit up with the likes of Callum Hudson-Odoi and Reese James combining and but just being essentially very, very dynamic and pacey. Chelsea have suffered of late due to the absence of Christian Pulisic. He, of course, will come back into the side and offer something a little bit different up front. It's really just the striker position because it does look like Giroud can't offer this particular Chelsea side anything. And Batshuayi, although he got a goal against Hull, quite a fortuitous one, he doesn't really look like to be doing it. And Tammy Abraham does need some sort of support up there. So it's not all resting on his shoulders. The thing is, something that's been done before and spoken about a little bit by Frank Lampard that I find quite interesting is he played Christian Pulisic down the middle. Now it wasn't as like a conventional false nine, it was more of a sort of central player that just makes late runs into the box, maybe drifts out right wide so he can dribble. I think we might see that again. If Chelsea do indeed not, or rather don't do any business this January, 
I can see him deploying Christian Pulisic down the middle again in certain games personally. So in this instance, obviously Chelsea won't be signing another winger this window probably. You'd be having Pulisic down the middle, hudson Adoy and Willian on the flanks. And remember, as a backup, if Chelsea really are lacking in the winged position, we still have Mason Mount out there. And to be honest, some of Mason Mount's best work this season has incidentally come from the left wing position and not necessarily in that number 10 role. So, and but there's a lot of people saying how Mount needs to be rested. I agree. I think he needs to be rotated out. But I'm just saying once everyone's back from injury and rested, Mount can rotate to the left wing. Other players can come into the midfield. I think perhaps, hopefully, we'll see more of Billy Gilmore introduced into the first team after recent positive performances. But I think out of all the absentees, the biggest one depending on his form and health is of course Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Now I've done videos on Ruben before, I'm a huge huge fan of his as an absolutely awesome footballer, a very strong specimen as well and most importantly a dynamic changer. He's come back from a very serious injury and like Callum Hudson-Odoi even though he's very close to the first team and he's training with the first team again he might not immediately explode into his previous form, it might take a while but if he can get close to it, or if he indeed can find that form that he had under Maurizio Sarri when he was so, so effective for the whole team, that will be like a new signing. When Chelsea are struggling to break down these deep block opposition, he really is a difference maker, much like Hazard was under Sarri, so was Ruben Loftus-Cheek. He could offer a completely different dynamic, bulldozing down the middle, taking the ball wide, combining, even holding the ball up like a second striker. Loftus-Cheek can do it all, so especially if he's coming in to that midfield to join Kovacic or Jorginho or Kovacic or Kante, if, if Mason Mount is indeed rested, you can afford to play him on the left wing if you have problems with wingers in terms of injuries or fatigue. And in that case, you can play Christian Pulisic down the middle instead of Tammy Abraham. So think about it that way. If Chelsea shore up their defensive backline, if they come to a decision of who's playing what, say, I don't know, Christensen and Rudiger, just start from now on. Lampard's like, right, you two are my boys, get a relationship, sort it out. <laughs> Kepa's a whole different conversation. If he can find some form again, superb. And then Rhys James is at right back, no one's touching that. And for the moment, Azpilicueta is at left back, no one's touching that. But if he's injured, you put Emerson in. Backline sorted for the moment. As already stated in the video, Chelsea have a wealth of midfielders and the return of Ruben Loftus-Cheek and the potential additional inclusion of the likes of Billy Gilmore could be hugely important for the Chelsea first team for the remainder of this season. So the front line, you obviously have the wingers. I don't know what's happening with Pedro, it did look like he was on his way out this January transfer window, but maybe not, who knows. Pedro, Willian, Christian Pulisic, Callum hudson Adoy, and when necessary, Mason Mount can all occupy the flanks. So with the striker position, like I said, obviously Tammy Abraham will remain the number one. Olivier Giroud, I don't know if he's going to get minutes regardless, I think he will really need to try and force a move on deadline day. Michy Batshuayi, of course, can rotate in and out with Tammy Abraham. Frank Lampard obviously came out recently and said, yes, I need to be able to rely on him. He's a Belgian international. He's a good player. I can rely on him. I trust him. Fine. I mean, he's been a poor form, but I get it. Fine. And then, like I said before, he's done it before. He's played Christian Pulisic down the middle. He's even said it's something we've tried in training. So I personally have the sneaking suspicion that he will do that again and he will use it as a striker option going forward throughout the rest of the season if he cannot and it's looking like he cannot make any signings. Still, although if they settle with some players and find form again, this probably will be enough to secure top four. <laughs> but it, it, there's a lot of ifs and buts in there, especially with Chelsea's top four competitors doing business this winter transfer window. Now, I'm not going to say this team is enough to beat Bayern Munich in the next round of the Champions League, but to be honest, that is a bit of a free hit at this point. The fact how Frank Lampard qualified out of that Champions League group at the expense of semi-finalists, last year's semi-finalists, Ajax, his European campaign has already been a success. He would have made a load of money for qualifying out of the groups for Chelsea. So that's fine. They will be happy with that. 
As long as you don't embarrass yourself against Bayern Munich, it's probably a bit of a free hit. Now again, I'm not saying Chelsea are definitely not doing any business this January transfer window because, like I said, deadline day, they often do business. Certainly when Conte came in, they got Marcus Alonso and David Luiz over the line very, very late on deadline day. In fact, David Luiz came in like midnight or something. They'd passed the deadline, but I think they'd filed the papers that allowed them to do it a bit late or something. And those two players ended up being integral in Chelsea's Premier League win that season. So it can happen. Chelsea do see value in doing business on deadline day. And if you want to keep updated on all this transfer news, make sure you do check by Football Therapy every single day. And I will, of course, keep you guys updated with any and all transfer news regarding Chelsea Football Club. But as per usual, I'm really interested in hearing your guys' thoughts and opinions on this matter. Do you think Chelsea can secure top four without any reinforcement? Do you think Ruben Loftus-Cheek will make the difference when he comes back in. Do you think Billy Gilmore can make a difference as well? Pulisic and Reese James coming back into the side. Do you, like me, think Pulisic will play as a striker again for Chelsea? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed the content, guys, be sure to like the video. And remember, come and follow me on Instagram at Football Yannick because that's what I'm doing live streams at the moment in most evenings so come check it out say hello I uh, don't know what else to say that's pretty much it make sure you swing by football therapy every single day I'll keep you updated with all the transfer news <laughs> sometimes I'll do two videos a day so make sure you swing by you guys take it easy enjoy the football and I will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chalk In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby